well, thank you everyone for coming here to our gospel drive-in in, in uh, Railway Street Car Park uh, in Antrim. Uh, we are really grateful to the council for providing and approving us to use this fantastic facility right here in the middle of the town. And there's probably not a more central point in, in our town. And to think that the gospel, the truth of God, the word of God can be sounded out freely and without hindrance in the middle of our town. Uh, it's, it is quite an amazing thought. And we were thinking about pandemic and all the, the negatives that have come from the pandemic, all the restrictions, but those restrictions have permitted us to be able to get out with the gospel. So God has his ways and his plans. Perhaps this is your first time here. You're very, very welcome uh, to come along and to be here. We're, we're glad to see you. Please come along next Sunday. Uh, in the will of God and for everyone who has supported us we are so thankful for that I'm going to read in three different parts of John's gospel and uh, in John's gospel chapter 1 uh, we read in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then in chapter 3, uh, Jesus is preaching to, uh, he's engaged with Nicodemus, the leader, the ruler of the Jews. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then in, uh, in chapter number 6, we have the wonderful miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And at the end of that chapter, we read these words. <coughs> Jesus said, I am, uh, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. We stand here in Railway Street Car Park and just opposite us, across the road, is the courthouse or what we call the new courthouse. It's one of the significant buildings in our town. There are a number of significant buildings in our town and I'm going to refer to those in a little message. But we're starting off with the courthouse across the road here. And we read in John's Gospel chapter 1 about origins origins about how this world came to be in the beginning there was a beginning there was a creation and that creation has brought everything about that you and I can see I stand here as a Bible believing Christian and I can tell you that I believe that our God has created this world there are other theories there are other thinkings out there. There are other hypotheses about how things came to be. But as I stand behind this microphone and with the Bible in my hand, I announce that God is our creator. He is the one who has made all things. All things large in this universe. All things small. Right down to the cell. Right down to the microscopic organisms he has made them all and he has made them all in their order so that they interact and move with each other in perfect unison. Without the sun, without the planets, we would not move and circulate. Without gravity, we would not exist. Without air, we could not breathe. Without all of the things that God has made, there would be no life. Our God is the creator and the life giver this verses that we've been reading in john's gospel chapter one tell us that god is father son and holy spirit and we believe in the trinity god the father god the son and god the holy spirit god has revealed himself to us and in his son jesus christ he is the creator let that sink into your mind and your heart today the Jesus that we read about in the Bible stories in Sunday school. The gentle Jesus, meek and mild. 
the one born in the baby and we love the Christ, the Christmas story he's much much bigger than that he is our creator he's the one who has made all things the Lord Jesus Christ and remember when you take his name on your lips perhaps in a swear word you're taking on your name on your lips the name of our creator the one who made all things and the one who's got your breath in his hand and not only that but we read that the word that is one of the titles of our Lord Jesus that he was made flesh our God is not a distant God he's not an unknowable God that like the religions of others in this world our God came right down to where we are God the Son in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ was made flesh was made human and dwelt here on earth 2,000 years ago you can go to Israel today you can take a plane if you're permit if you're permitted you can travel a few hours and you can land in the country and in the land where Jesus walked you can visit it, the towns and the villages and the city of Jerusalem where he visited and where he stayed and where he preached and where he made his miracles he put his stamp on the sands of time 2,000 years ago and the world has never been the same since his name can never be erased his name is eternal his name will go on forever Jesus Christ have you ever acknowledged him as a creator have you ever accepted him as your savior have you ever lived for him as your Lord he came full of grace and truth I look across at the courthouse here today and I think on that word truth truth you know if everyone told the truth there'd be no need for a courthouse if there were no lies and deception in this world there'd be no need for court cases everyone would tell the truth but our world is not like that the human heart is not like that so easily even from a child we go off speaking lies and deception and the truth is not in us it's an evidence of the broken heart of the human condition the lack of truth and so we stand in front of the greatest evidence for the existence of God a courthouse a search for the truth and it's amazing that in the heart of man there is a desire to know the truth to know the truth sometimes perhaps you like to listen to the radio and the talk shows that are trying to find out the truth about what happened and why did it happen and who allowed this and who allowed that and they're trying to the questioner is trying to find out the truth the truth and how hard it can be to find the truth people hiding behind different reasons excuses deceptions to cover up for whatever reason but our Lord Jesus Christ he was full of grace and truth you want to find what's true you want to find what's dependable you want to find what's honest what you want to find what's something you can trust in and not be deceived our Lord Jesus Christ he is the truth in heaven there's no courthouses there's no untruths there there's no sin will you be there will your sins be all forgiven Will you be able to stand righteous before God? The Lord Jesus Christ 
he met Nicodemus. And he told Nicodemus, the most religious and upright man of his day, and perhaps we can try and seek uh, solace with our hearts and with our minds and our search for our truth in religion, religious practices, religious attendance, religious affiliation. It seems so good. It seems so close to the truth. If I could just be the person I should be and, and do the things that I'm supposed to do, well, everything will be all right at the end. The good deeds will be weighed against the bad and I'll get into heaven. The Lord Jesus said to the most religious and upright man of his day, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The second building I'm thinking about today is a hospital. Up the road here, Bruce Road up to the Antrim area hospital. And we're thinking about, about the, the area where the children are born. What a, what a special place that is. A tender place where life is brought forth. We also think that in that hospital... It's not only a place where life is brought forth, but it's a place where death comes. And we know that only too well. The hospital, a place of life and a place of death. You know, whenever we were born as an infant, we were given human life. But this human life may be long or it may be short, but it never fits us for heaven. We need a new sort of life. We need eternal life. We need life from God. We need to be born again. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. Except a man, a woman, a boy or a girl be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I said unto these, he repeated it, ye must be born again. Only the Lord Jesus is the one who can provide everlasting life. Life that goes beyond this earth. Life that goes beyond physical life. Life that fits us and equips us for heaven. Have you been born again? Do you have everlasting life? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, the life giver, not only of physical life, by him all things created, but he's the one who's able to give everlasting life. Have you ever trusted him? Have you ever come to him? Have you ever fallen before him? Admit that you're a sinner, that you need to be saved, that you need to be born again. That you need to have the life that he gives. That you're not fit for heaven. And he's the only one who can make you fit. Have you ever trusted him? That famous verse in John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him, our Lord Jesus Christ, should not perish in hell and the lake of fire forever and ever for we have eternal souls but have everlasting life last only a few minutes left here we're in john chapter 6 and we see that vast company of 5,000 men and women and children on top of that all fed from the hands of our lord jesus christ by five barley loaves and two small fishes the empty crowd he could fill and he could satisfy the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who can fill the deepest needs of the human heart he can fill the empty life he can give true satisfaction He's the only one. He demonstrated it in that physical way by taking those five barley loaves and those two small fishes and feeding 
the vast multitude. But there's a spiritual lesson. When he said, I am the bread of life. If you want to experience and enjoy everlasting life, he is the one who gives life. When you come and trust him at the moment of salvation, he imparts the Holy Spirit that comes down and indwells that believer and they become saved. And then they begin to live that life. And we live that life by feeding on Christ. Reading his word. Praying to him. Enjoying the fellowship of others who know him as their friend and saviour. We enjoy it by telling others about our Lord Jesus Christ. In our homes, in our families, in our friends, in our neighbourhoods, in our workplaces. To tell people that there is only one who can satisfy. In life and in eternity. Jesus Christ, I am the bread of life. We're thinking on Tesco. We're thinking on Asda. We're thinking on all the shops that supply our provisions and our bread and our fruit and our vegetables and we're thankful for them, the big shops and the small shops. I hope we support all the local ones. They can only satisfy until the next meal, until the next time you get hungry. But our Lord Jesus Christ, he satisfies forever, forever. If you don't know him as your saviour, I send out the appeal today. Come to him. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. And that he is a saviour. That on the cross. He died. For my sins. Was buried. And rose again. He's a life giver. And bow your knee. And your heart. And your all to Jesus Christ today. And he will save you. He will cleanse and take away every sin. You'll be born again into God's family. In which you can never be excluded. Heaven will be your home. And he will satisfy. The deepest yearnings of your heart. In time. And in eternity. May God bless. Let us pray. Father we thank you for being able to be here. And in this beautiful afternoon. Clearly, we trust to present the person of our Lord Jesus Christ as the only Saviour. We pray for our town. We pray for the, the families across our town. We pray for every home. We pray for those who are living on their own, perhaps don't have any family. Father, we pray for everyone in our town today. Father, we know that our prayers ascend from our lips and from our hearts. And can go right up to the throne of grace. To heaven itself. And Father thou hast the power. To answer our prayers. Thou hast proven thy power. In the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. The creator himself. Who has made all things that we can ever see or touch. Not only that. The one who came to manifest. And to show himself here on earth. Jesus Christ. And Father not only that. But he went to the cross. To bear our sins in his own body on the tree. He entered into death. And he triumphed death. And he's ascended to heaven again. Father we seek to praise his name. May individuals reach out to him. In faith this day. And for those who know him. As their saviour. May our hearts grow warmer. And our convictions grow deeper. And our witness grow stronger. For him. Day by day until he comes again what a day that will be father when we will see him when we shall be like him so bless us and take us home safely we pray and we look forward to next lord's day in thy will for the drive-in here in railway street car park we pray to bless our brother as he comes next week in the name of our lord jesus christ